Okay, practice die hybrid question, page 35, question number one. So now we're getting to some interesting questions here, die hybrids. So of course in the notes, if you read the notes, die hybrids is looking at two trait inheritance. So not just, let's say, uh, seed shape, but also seed color. So Mendel did die hybrids as well. So die hybrids, a uh, little bit different, uh, especially how we uh, determine our gametes, but we'll go through the question and we'll kind of give a demonstration of that. So this is, uh, again, uh, question number one, uh, blood typing. Uh, lots of blood typing on there. So it says one of the parents is blood type O uh, and with RH negative. So before we get into that, let's take a look at the standard legend. Now these alleles and how they notate uh, these alleles for blood type is something that you have to memorize. Uh, they want you to be using this type of notation. So we know this is an example of uh, codominance as well. Uh, if I have the allele for A, it's represented with an I and then a capital A. Doesn't matter what the other allele is, that's gonna give me A blood. If I have the B allele represented with I capital B with a line, that's gonna give me B blood. But uh, we've seen this before, codominance, if I have both of them together, both these are going to represent themselves on that blood type. So both are gonna be expressed and it's gonna be AB blood. Now the only way to get O blood is if you have two recessive alleles. So both A and B are both dominant, completely dominant over the I, or sorry, the O allele, uh, but they're co-dominant with each other. Okay, so that is the only way that I can get O blood. Now we also know that there is an RH factor. It's a separate trait than this ABO blood typing. So this is what makes this an example of a dye hybrid. So for another trait, let's just divide this off. We also know that if I have an RH plus, doesn't matter what the other allele is, that's gonna give me positive blood. And if I'm gonna have negative blood, I have to have both those recessive alleles for RH negative to determine or to give me negative recessive blood. Okay, so again, two traits. One is ABO blood typing, and the other one is the RH factor, the rhesus factor. So this makes this a dye hybrid different than what we've been doing up to now, where we've been just looking at monohybrids, one trait inheritance. Okay, so now that we have the legend, this, like I say, this is one legend that would probably be beneficial to memorize because there are lots of questions on blood typing. Uh, they love blood typing. So let's go through the question now. Underline step two, underline the parent. Uh, one parent is blood type O with the RH factor, and that's crossed with another parent who's hetero heterozygous for both blood type A and RH positive. Okay? So uh, I say RH positive because, of course, if it's hetero, positive has to be in there, uh, and that makes that person positive blood. So let's go with their genotypes. So I'm going to write their genotypes down here. So we underline this parent. The only way, go back to our legend, the only way to have old blood is if that parent is carrying two recessive alleles. Uh, and same thing with the RH factor. If they are negative blood, they must have an RH negative, RH negative. Okay, so that's one parent. It doesn't distinguish which one is the male or the female. Uh, the other one is heterozygous for blood type A. So she must have at least the A allele. Now, heterozygous means the only other option can be, can be, it can't be another A because that would be homozygous for A, and it can't be a B because that would be AB blood. She wouldn't have, or this parent wouldn't have A blood. So the only other thing it could be for heterozygous is the recessive allele for O blood, okay? And also heterozygous for RH, so RH positive, RH negative, okay? So now we do the Punnett square. Now with the Punnett square, we said we do not show repeats within that individual parent. So uh, I'm going to, because I like working from left to right, not up and down, I don't got a lot of space. I'm gonna use the parent that has the most possible gamete possibilities and put them across the top because I like working from left to right. So what I mean by that, if I take a look at this, now when you are determining or using the genotypes to determine the gametes, 
you use what's called the foiling system. So you're going to use arrows. And please use the arrows until you get better at this. When you get more comfortable, then you can kind of fly through these questions and you can kind of see uh, how you're going to get these gametes. So what that means is you take the first allele and you match it with the first allele of the other trait. Okay? So we're going to put that down here. Capital A, RH positive. And we're going to separate that with a line. Now, take that first allele, match it with the second allele of the other trait. Now, that's different, so we're going to put that right in there, put a line there. Now, foiling system, we take the second allele of the first trait and match it with the other two, just like we did. Okay, and use these arrows so you can get really comfortable with how you're determining the gametes there. And then the last one, that's different, so we have to show that as well. Kind of ran out of space here, but we'll make do. Should have moved to the left a bit more. So, same thing with the other parent. So the other parent now goes down the side, and we're going to match that first allele with the first allele of the second trait, and put that in as the gamete, and draw a line. Give yourself lots of space. And we can see now that when I match it with the, take the first allele, match it with the second allele of the second trait, that's a repeat. We already have that. Now you can save yourself tons of times by not, by not showing repeat gametes within the same parent. Okay? And then we go to see this, repeat, repeat. So we've taken essentially a 16 punnet square and we put it into four blocks by not doing shortcuts. Now if you didn't do that, you would have to reduce at the end anyways, and you've just wasted five to 10 minutes of your life. So uh, don't show repeats within the first gamut. It's a great shortcut. So now we're gonna bring them together. When we bring them together, just like we did with mono monohybrids, we always show the dominant allele first. So we're gonna bring IA, that's dominant, to the little i. And then the RH positive is dominant to the RH negative, okay? And then what we're going to do just underneath here is we're going to put their actual phenotype. This person would be A positive. So that's just the phenotype. And that's, of course, the genotype. So we're simulating fertilization by bringing these gametes together now. Now let's do the other one. IA, little i, RH negative, RH negative. So again, that person's going to be A blood, but they're going to be A negative. Okay? Little i, little i, Rh positive, Rh negative. That person, little i's, go look at your legend. That's why we've done it. O, and of course the positive is going to dominate and mask the expression of the negative. O positive. Do the last one, little i, little i, Rh negative, Rh negative. That one was going to be O negative. So what's our ratio? Uh, we have, and they wanted a phenotypic ratio of the F1 generation. It would be a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. Okay. Any questions? I know this is a little more complicated than what we've been doing in the past. So if you have any questions, uh, just uh, give me an email and we'll go over a couple more questions if you'd like. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye.